guys, it's Reagan, and today I'm gonna be filming my April wrap up. And, uh, uh, well, to put it simply, I read 16 books in the month of April. So grab a snack because, like usual, I do try to give these books each mini reviews, but I did a lot of reviews, so it shouldn't hopefully be too, too long, but let's just get started. The very first book I read this month is Chopsticks by Jessica Anthony and Rodrigo Corral, and this isn't really a book because it's entirely comprised of pictures. And uh, this was super duper interesting. I think I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows, it's a love story between a girl and a boy, as shown on the cover, and basically like the girl is this piano prodigy and this, the guy is an, a recent immigrant and it's just their trials and tribulations and the thing that's really cool about this, you really get a sense of the story and the emotion and there's barely any words. Like there's a little bit of conversations that you get to see through like notes and like instant messaging but really it's all through pictures and it was pretty darn cool and it makes me want to read like graphic novels and stuff because I don't know I just really like the visual aspect of this. Okay, next book I read I'm not gonna spend too much time on because I am gonna have a whole video up about this pretty darn soon so look forward to that and that is Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. I loved this book this is a perfect summer read and this book comes out on May 6th and like I said I'll have a whole review but just know that I loved it and I gave it a five out of a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It was lovely and wonderful and it's, it was a good time and look forward to a video on this. Being as I, after I read Since You've Been Gone and basically all the contemporary I read last month, I was still in a contemporary mood and I still am in a contemporary mood which is just weird but anyway so I bought this book and I read it and it's uh, The Distance Between Us by Cassie West or Casey West and I thought this book was okay. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. This is um, basically like about a girl who's not very wealthy and her relationship with a guy who is very wealthy but the thing is I just found it to be very unrealistic and I realize most contemporary books are unrealistic but this like even beyond just that I felt that the relationship seemed to have just started kind of randomly like I didn't buy the relationship from the beginning and I think that was the problem like right when Xander the guy and the girl uh, came in like met I was like I don't really get this and then all of like the family issues and like the social issues were just solved way too conveniently and like easily so I just I just couldn't get into the story and so I, I ended up giving it three out of five stars I mean it wasn't a bad book but it wasn't as good as the other contemporaries I've been reading so that kind of disappointed me but yeah, yeah. The next book I read was my favorite book of the month and it was amazing and it was The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. This is book two of the Mistborn trilogy and this was so freaking amazing. Obviously I can't go into the plot of this but I will say I love this even more than the first book and it blew my brain cells out. It was awesome and it was really long. This book is like almost 800 pages and I read it in like three days. It was so amazing. If you're not aware the Mistborn trilogy or the final empire of the first book is a high fantasy series. That's the plot line of if the bad guy won. So there's this evil lord who's in charge and a whole bunch of people are grouping together to try to overthrow this dark lord. It's a high fantasy book but it has really really awesome like just it kind of is it kind of reminds me of like a high fantasy Ocean's Eleven. It's really exciting and really cool and it probably has one of the coolest magic systems I've ever read in a fantasy book because it involves meadows and allomancy. They basically allomancers can consume metal like iron, copper, pewter and then burn it and then they'll have abilities. It's an amazing series. I know you guys have heard a lot about it at this point. But just trust me and just read it, okay? Cool, thanks. The next three books I read, I read in a span of 20, 48 hours or 24 hours, and it is the entire Pretty series. So the first one is Summer I Turned Pretty, and then It's Not Summer Without You, and then We'll Always Have Summer. I absolutely loved this series. I think I gave each one of them five out of five stars. However, I did do an entire review and discussion on this, so I'm not going to go too much detail. And if you want to know more, just click the link I'll have down below and you can go and watch that. I loved it. Please give it a try. It's not all fluff contemporary. It has great deeper meanings, but I'll move on now. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. The next book I read was Stormfront by Jim Butcher. This is the first book of a very long ongoing series by Jim Butcher. Jim Butcher is the author of the Codex Hilaire, which is a fantasy series I really, really love, as you guys probably know. Um, 
This book centers around Harry Dresden, who is a wizard detective. Set in like our modern world, if that makes sense. Like he's like a wizard detective in our world. I already said that. So basically people are like, you're not a wizard. But anyway, um, the thing with this is this is the first book of this series and I knew going into this, I've heard from my really good friend who's read this and just other people, that the first couple of books aren't that great, but they get really, really, they get a lot better. So uh, that being said, I ended up giving this book like a 3 out of 5 stars. It was okay, but I will say I loved the narrator, like I loved the main character Harry Dresden. I thought he was hilarious, but the story and like the crime aspect of this I thought was just alright, but I do want to continue on with the series because I hear it really gets a lot better. So if you're into like fantasy crime novels, check this out. You'd probably really like this. Yep. The next two books I read was The Nethergram and Grasshopper Jungle. I also did a review mashup on both of these books, so I will link that down below so you can go watch that if you want more information. But long story short is this is a middle grade high fantasy novel that I really 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 liked. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads or a 5 out of 5, I actually don't remember. But a really high rating. I really really liked this. And Grasshopper Jungle so weird, but I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads as well. I also really, really liked it. And if you're wanting more information, go watch the review. They're really good. The next book I read was Half Blood by Jennifer R. L. Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is a young adult paranormal fantasy series. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Explaining the lore behind this book is very complicated, and it would take me like three minutes. So I'm not gonna go into that. But basically it follows a young 17 year old Alexandra who lives in a world where there are half-bloods and pure-bloods and the half-bloods are trained to protect the pure-bloods as well as um, go out and fight these like evil, not vampires but like a different, like essentially a vampire but not a vampire, like evil blood-sucking things that aren't vampires, okay? and. Uh, so yeah, so basically she's at the school and she's training, and it's really good. I hear the story, the series builds on itself really nicely. I just have to say, like, I really have to, like, PSA this, because if you like Vampire Academy, like, if you're a huge Rochelle Mead fan, read this series, because you're really gonna like it. It has a lot of the similar elements that Vampire Academy had. It's not the same story, and I hear they diverge quite a bit as like it continues on but if you like you know like school like a really kick-ass heroine like a school setting where she's like training in combat training with someone that she's not supposed to be with but there's secret chemistry and things like that you're really gonna like this because it has all that stuff and I ended up giving it a four out of five stars I really enjoyed it I want to continue on and hopefully I will soon yep the next book I read was where things come back by John Corley Whaley Going into this book, I had no idea what it was about, and I personally think that's the way to go into this book, so I'm not gonna give you a synopsis, and I'm not gonna really tell you anything about it, besides that I really, really, really enjoyed it, and I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It's really short. It surprised me. Uh, it was very unique and a very creative way to tell a story, and if you like contemporary and you like just good stories that make you think, this is a great book. It surprised me. Um, basically, all you need to know is, in a remarkable, bizarre, and heart-rending summer, before Colin Witter's senior year of high school, everything he thinks he understands about a small, painfully dull Arkansas town vanishes. That's all you really need to know because it's a really good book, and I really, really enjoyed it. So. The next book I read is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Allery Sines. I think that's how people told me how to say it. This is another contemporary book that was absolutely beautiful. I loved this book. It was just, it was beautiful. This follows two kids, Aristotle and Dante, but mostly Aristotle because that's the perspective you get. And it's set in El Paso, Texas in 1987 and it's all about like these two boys like growing up and like figuring out who they are and like what they want but also it's about family and self-discovery and like happiness and figuring out what makes one happy and figuring out like it's okay to be happy it's just it was a beautiful story I loved all the characters in this it was just it was fantastic so 
If you want just a beautiful book that will make you happy and think about things and also like just just read this, it's great. It was it was truly great and it was beautifully written as well. Like there's so many quotable scenes in here. I just I really loved this book quite a bit. So yeah, I gave this 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. So there's that. The next book I read was Fire and Flood by Victoria Scott. I there's a lot of hype revolving around this on um on booktube and going in I to was told that it was like Hunger Games meets Pokemon and I see that but I also slightly disagree with that. I agree with the Pokemon aspect but not necessarily the Hunger Games aspect because yeah there's a competition but at the same time it's like not like the Hunger Games at all. I hate a lot of people like to make that like say like it's like the Hunger Games but in this case and eh, not so much. Um Basically, Fire and Flood follows a girl who has a dying older brother, okay? And all of a sudden, and there, her parents have, like, uprooted her and moved her to, like, the middle of nowhere at Montana because they think that's gonna, like, the fresh air is gonna help her older brother. And then one day she gets, like, this device and it's basically telling her that she's been invited to participate in the Brimstone Bleed that's, like, a three-month race that covers the span of, like, three different environments. And if she wins, she gets a cure to the disease that her brother has. So she's like, okay. So she joins in. And the thing that I really like about this book is that I like the main character because she was so impractical. I know that sounds really strange, but this isn't a dystopian book. This isn't a girl who's been raised in this dystopian society from day one. Like she's been raised like in our society and all of a sudden she's just participating in this brimstone bleed. So of course she's impractical. Like, she doesn't know how to survive in the desert. She doesn't know what to do in a jungle. So I kind of like that because you got to see her like having to figure some stuff out and kind of come to terms with like what reality is at the moment. And I, and I liked it quite a bit actually. It was extremely action packed. It was really fun and I'm excited to see where this story takes off. And also, people who have read this, what would you classify this as? Because it's not dystopian, because it's set not in a dystopian world. Like, is it science fiction? Fan? I don't, I don't know. Urban fantasy? I don't, what does this classify as? I don't know. But I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodread. I really like it. I think a lot of people would also really like it. So check this out if you haven't. The second to last book I read this month was Coin Heist by... Ulyssa Ludwig and I'm gonna have a whole video up on this in about in a couple of weeks so I'm not gonna go too much into it but basically it is a novel following uh, four very unlikely kids who are trying to rob the US Mint to save their school from basically bankruptcy and it's like Breakfast Club meets um, Ocean's Eleven. It was really really fun and I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. <laughs> Four to five stars on Goodreads, but like I said, I'm gonna have a whole video up on this book in the future. The very last book I read this month was Crest by Marissa Meyer, the third book in the Lunar, Chron Lunar Chronicles series. This one was my favorite of the three so far. I was kind of like, it took me a little bit to get into it because I had it, I read Cinder and Scarlet back to back like over a year ago, so to be honest, I didn't remember anything. Like, at all. I can't say what I didn't remember because that would spoil the first two books, but essentially I went to the third book going like, wait, who? Who are you? What's going on? And I was like, oh yeah. Um, I really enjoyed this. I really loved Cress and I loved Thorn and Cinder and Kai. I will say I had a hard time connecting with Scarlet or Wolf in this book, but it happens. Um, I really liked it. I think I gave this a 4.5 out of 5. Like, these books are getting better and better as she's writing them and I'm really excited for winter coming out next year because I like the character Winter because she's interesting. I'll just say that. Like I like the, I like where she went with that one. I like that Marissa Meyer. But yes, if you haven't read the Lunar Chronicles, I'm sure you've heard about it, but it's essentially fairy tale retelling set with a science fiction twist. So guys, that is my what is April wrap up and I will see you guys soon with my TBR. 